Hi again, everybody. Thank you for joining this, um, this webinar dedicated to uh, a measuring technology from um, WTW spectrophotometer. So WTW, that is a, a Zylem brand. I'm um, Quentin, the sales manager for Africa uh, for laboratory and uh, online measuring system. So thank you again. I'm today with our product manager sitting in Germany. Uh, her name is uh, Suzanne Goro. So thank you for joining, Suzanne. Um, it's a pleasure. Today's topic will be uh, the optical reagent-free measurement, but let me share it with you, please, the, the plan of this webinar. Uh, Suzanne, can you go to the next slide? Thank you. So basically, I will do a short introduction of uh, Xylem, um, Xylem Group. Then I will give the lead to, uh, to my colleague Suzanne for talking about the basics of optical reagent-free measurement, its implementation. And of course, we will have a question and answer session at the end of this presentation. Of course, we are um, recording this webinar and you will receive at the end, a few days um, later this webinar, you will receive the, the record and the PDF file for this uh, presentation. Please uh, feel free to ask any question on the Q&A uh, button that you have on your screen, and uh, we will answer all the questions at the end of this presentation. Can you go to the next slide, please, uh, Susan? Yes. So basically, um, Rapidly, Xylem is uh, an American group, and we are um, more than 18,000 employees worldwide, okay, um, more than 5 billion revenue, and our core business is actually water, uh, water, um, generally speaking. So, as you may already know, we are manufacturing pumps, we are manufacturing meters, but we are as well manufacturing as some analytics devices. And this is the topic of today. So basically, if you go to the next slide, please, uh, Suzanne. We're gonna talk about Xylem analytics and specifically uh, WTW brand. So here you can have an overview on our main analytics brand and when they have been um, created. Uh, so we have, uh, for example, SI Analytics, uh, based in Germany as well, manufacturing some titration system. Um, we have, for example, MJK, based in Denmark. Uh, we are manufacturing some electromagnetic flow meters, but level sensor as well. So basically, you can see here on the world where our factory are uh, located. Uh, our analytics factories, so mainly in Europe and in the US. We do have uh, some uh, local offices, some Xylem offices worldwide, as you could see on this, uh, on this slide, uh, in Japan, China, but as well in, in Africa, where I'm uh, sitting, uh, in Morocco, for, for example. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. And within analytics, we are dedicated to water business, but not only. And for this, we are covering uh, what we call three market segments. So environmental, lab, and process um, through uh, different brands that I have just mentioned. For example, if we go through WTW, we have two kinds of uh, devices. We are manufacturing some online measuring system for example, for uh, effluent monitoring or for drinking water analysis or in the wastewater treatment plant, for example, where we can um, measure pH, uh, COD, BOD, or nitrate, for example, continuously in your plant. But we do manufacture some laboratory and on-field devices as well, such as, for example, uh, portable turbidity meters or spectrophotometers and this is we really, uh, this will be sorry the the topic of today, the Photolab seven thousand six hundred UVBs. So I let you the lead, Suzanne. Thank you very much for listening. And again, please feel free to ask 
any question on the Q&A button. Over to you, Susan. Thank you, um, Quentin. Um, as Quentin already said, my name is Suzanne Goller. I'm uh, at the headquarter of uh, the Xylem Analytics Germany part in Weilheim. I'm with the company since 20 years and one of the uh, very uh, pioneering things in the development of optical lab instruments has been the Photolab 7600 UV Vis spectrophotometer, which many of you might know um, for routine analysis. Uh, now, this um, photometer is um, very peculiar because we do have a meter, which is, we always call it one for all or all in one. So we not only provide routine analysis, but also these pioneering feature of the optical reagent-free measurement uh, in the UV range for the COD nitrate and nitrate, which you eventually already know from our IQ sensor net. Um, beside that, we do have uh, multi-step measurements like chlorophyll, so environmental determinations, but also a very comprehensive and nice PC color software uh, for many standards in, for example, food and beverage uh, or industrial processes. But today's session is all about UV measurement um, by scan without reagents uh, with that photometer. And um, before I start with the technique, I want just to um, point out the importance of COD measurement. Um, it is the uh, chemical oxygen demand, so that's the abbreviation of COD. Uh, and COD is a sum parameter, which is mainly uh, given for the determination of the organic compound in wastewater. Um, and it is measured and determined as an equivalent of its oxidation, in fact. So it's given as O2 in milligram per liter. Um, the oxygen which is required for this oxidation is provided by the agent, um, it's potassium dichromate. Uh, and it is a very long process, as you all know, it's a two hour digestion process and cool down and it takes quite some time. Uh, now there are different standard methods which Decri describes um, the routine analysis um, and uh, with an ISO uh, regulation in uh, 2002, um, also a smaller scale determination was given with the uh, cell tests, which you all uh, probably are using. So um, this already diminished the amount of agent um, and makes it more uh, environmentally uh, attractive. Um, and there is many ranges and it's depending if you are measuring in the inland or outlet. So a wide uh, range of testing kits. Um, and the importance is also because it's uh, worldwide in many countries, it's the main parameter of successful weight water clinic. Um, and it also is the parameter where in many countries a discharge fee has to be Paid. So actually, uh, accurate measurement and, and, uh, and a good cleaning process is uh, what we need everywhere. Um, there is also in many countries an additional self-control, and it's a time-consuming process, as I already mentioned. Um, now, um, the IQ SensorNet of the brand VTV from Xylem is a very long uh, and successful story already. So it, uh, IQ SensorNet has been developed in 2001. Uh, and then uh, in 2004, the very first um, optical sensor, so you didn't need any reagent for detection of nitrate and COD, has been um, uh, introduced in 2004. And uh, with the actual sensors, which you might know, these UV sensors, uh, we started in 2012. And uh, with Photolab um, 7600 UV, so the spectrophotometer, the new spectrophotometer in the year 2015, we transferred this uh, technique of an optical COD detection into the lab. And it's still a unique feature. You won't find it in this, um, in this way uh, with any other um, um, companies uh, worldwide in the moment. Uh, so, um, I want just to come back to this IQ sensor net, which was the base of our development for the lab method. Uh, in the process measurement of IQ sensor net, there are spectral probes which are connected to the IQ 
uh, SensorNet Hub, uh, and uh, they are controlling and can control uh, several parameters at a time, and it's a continuous measurement, as Quentin mentioned already. Uh, and this is, if you look at the right side, you see the blue line, so this is the constant reading. Um, and uh, with um, IQ sensor that you can monitor inlet, aeration, and outlet. Uh, now, this experience has been transferred to lab, and I have to say, uh, with the spectrophotometer, we only can cover the biggest part, and this means the successful cleaning process, and it means we can uh, measure the outlet. Um, now, um, it's, it's really a smashing way to get a result. Uh, it is uh, only in municipal wastewater. If it's too industrial, you have some parts which are not absorbing in uh, UV, uh, this, uh, in the UV range. Uh, but uh, in a municipal wastewater, it's an easy thing. You select the method like you select other methods. Then you just uh, add a sample into a 10 millimeter quartz cell. Quartz cell is important because we are in the UV range. And then you just get after 30 seconds and reading. So um, this also works in um, some surface water. So how is this possible? Um, I want just to give a short overview of the principle of this measurement. Uh, so we are in comparison to a reagent um, determination. We are measuring the uh, absorbance directly in the UV range. You know that for nitrate and nitrate anyway, it's around 220 nanometer in some countries, some uh, standard methods. Uh, but here we have a complete um, um, scan and, and have an algorithm behind. COD is much more complex because it's a sum parameter. So it's quite any... Um, uh, substance and organic matter which is in a sample and so we need here an absorbance behavior this means after cleaning process you have certain uh, compounds in the water and and it's a wide range of those um, compounds so actually um, it's um, depending on the sample matrix as well and we are measuring in the outlet here we pipette the sample in a 10 uh, millimeter quartz cuvette the spectra is read, uh, is read from 200 to 399 nanometers. Then in the background, there are complex algorithms. And these scan, which we have performed, is evaluated. And then uh, it is more or less compared to a background um, real sample kind of calibration curve. So actually, we do have a reference spectra in the background. And once this has been uh, compared and aligned and evaluated, so it takes 30 seconds more or less, uh, the instant value output for the value of this COD is displayed. Um, as I said already, please be aware it is not um, applicable to uh, industrial wastewaters because there are too many substances and organic compounds which are not um, absorbing in UV range and partly it can be too much turbidity in it as well. Um, here you see it just in an easy graph how it works. Um, so we come from spectral measurement to an instant and direct data output. Um, you put in the sample, um, the spectra is red, you can see it on the screen how it is developed. You will, by the way, get some experience reading it already when it is the sample is being scanned, uh, then the evaluation in the background, and then a direct reading at the end at your screen. Um, now, um, as I said, you will get some experience uh, how a spectra is looking like. And as we all know, no water is like the other water. We call it a matrix. So basically, inlet, you know, it's completely different to outlet. Um, but also, uh, if you go to surface water, which can be measured uh, as well, um, you have clear, clearer sample, you have some turbidity, you have more water, which might have a yellowish tint because of uh, humidic acid. So actually, not all matrices are, uh, can be compared, uh, can be evaluated and measured. Others can. And therefore, we have a new guidance, which helps you a little bit. 
Um, you see, for example, this is very, very high, it's going up to three absorbance um, um, units, which is more or less the end of our readability. So actually, uh, absorbance uh, is needed. Oh, we do have a, a absolute correct uh, little, so from our experience, we know this is a good spectra, the green one, which says this is uh, absolute good um, measurable sample. Sometimes um, it uh, is that a user calibration, I come to it in a minute, a user calibration is recommended because, as I said, we compare a real sample spectra in the background and, and you know it from, 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 from IQ SensorNet that it could be good to make a user calibration to make an offset or a correction of the calibration curve. And then there are definitely uh, matrix, uh, so water, matrix, water, uh, water matrix, sorry, um, which cannot be um, measured. Um, so, um, what measuring range can we um, can we do? So, it's based on standard solutions. Um, and as I say, we we are measuring real samples. So, actually, depending on the user calibration, the absolute measuring range can uh, differ a little bit, but based on standard solutions, we are in the range between 2 and 75 milligram per liter COD. For nitrate, we are between 0.1, respectively 3.0 milligram per liter, and nitrate, um, it's a bigger range, but um, you have to consider if there is a lot of nitrate and uh, nitrate is in the same range, it is covered by nitrate. So actually, we talk mainly about COD and nitrate. Um, and then as, a, as this is a smaller range, the question is, is a dilution possible? Now, since we are measuring real samples and compare it to a, um, to a, to a, to a real sample uh, in a given range, um, this absorbance behavior is uh, limited uh, and we shouldn't dilute it a lot. So uh, it is, the rule is, as much dilution as you need, but as low as possible. That is a very important fact with the optical reagent-free measurement uh, in the lab with, spectro, uh, with the spectrophotometer. And yes, it can be also used in surface matter. Um, we offer two methods for COD. One is for COD total, so which would be in the outlet of um, a sewage plant, for example. And we also have a method for dissolved water. And for the surface water, we recommend the COD dissolved method. Now, what is the pioneering part uh, on this optical reagent free measurement? It has so many benefits. Um, if you think even about the time. So it's one minute with the sample and the evaluation versus a 2.5 hour process if we think about the cool down. And I want to talk about the cool down for, for the lab method here as well. You should always do a, a slow cool down because then all turbidity is settling and you do not get disturbance and inaccurate values because there's too much turbidity from the digestion process. So it's faster than any digestion. It's cost free. You do not need any chemicals to read it. Um, so this means it's a reduction of overall costs. Why it is only a reduction? This means for sure you must to set up the process in your sewage plant. Uh, so you need to have some testing periods, implementation period, you need some tests and then Usually it's only a self-control tool and for reporting, you still have to perform a test kit. But as you see, it can be a, a, a really um, valuable reduction of overall costs. Um, it can be used to check um, the required measurement range before you even do a routine analysis, because sometimes if you are on the edge and then you have inaccurate values, this costs you money because of the discharge fee. So it can be a good tool just to do a quick test and see in which range you are or even um, unknown events. Then you have a cost-free test in countries um, who are using a retainer sample and have to store it for quite a while. It is eco-friendly because we do not use any potassium dichromate, uh, no mercury, etc., which is in the reagents of the COD test. And uh, we also do have a non-hazardous, non-cancerogenic um, 
setting with the um, without reagents. Um, and if you are doing both a process with IQ sensor net, so process measurement and lab measurement, uh, it can be a quick on-site check for your process sensors, and it can be a matrix adjustment of the process sensor, a quick one. But be aware for both the process and the optical reagent-free measurement with the spectrophotometer, the lab testing with the COD test kits or a DIN standard method is the reference for both to get them settled and uh, adjusted to your environment. So Quentin, would you just have a question, a question for me, um, the determinations they are, um, the users are using? Yes, please. Uh, we would like to have your um your answer on this question, please. So I will uh, start the poll. Could you just please answer this question? How many determinations per parameter do you usually perform for each sample? It is one, two, or three uh, tests per parameter. So I will give you, let's say, 30 seconds, and I will close this poll. Don't be shy. <laughs> you can share your, your answer. I will close the poll in, in a few seconds now. It would be a very helpful uh, answer because much of testing in the lab is related to the accuracy of optical reaction-free measurement. So it would be very nice if you could answer these questions and we can uh, also give a statement why we think this and that um, measurement would be great. Okay, so I will close the poll, Susan. Okay. And I'm sharing now the results. Can you see them? I can see it as well. Okay, so basically the main answer, 42% of the audience has answered that they are doing two tests per parameters. Then three tests come after 31% of the audience and finally 27% answered one test. Do you have any comments um, on that? That is very great, and I want to congratulate to this audience because um, double and triple determinations will help you to get the best accurate values, particularly if you have to report. Um, and um, this means um, you have some potential to save costs. That's one thing. And the second thing is you do all right to get a good implementation into your system. Because the double determination makes sure that you already see an outlier. The triple determination helps you to, um, to uh, reject an uh, outlier and be sure that you have uh, the result which you are having is a good result. And actually, that is the best approach also to have a good implementation of an optical reagent-free uh, measurement. So great audience. Congratulations. Very good lab skills. And this is really excellent. Um, I come to the user calibration and how we approach the implementation a little bit later, but I just want to finish on the convenience and the optical reagent-free measurement itself. Um, so it is, uh, we made it more comfortable. Many of you um, who are using um, spectrophotometers in daily work, in routine, they know you have a barcode, you can give uh, IDs. Eventually you have uh, some settings, you have standard AQS. So actually we brought all these convenience to optical reagent-free measurement as well. It looks a little bit different because we are doing different things. So we can store profiles. For example, if you have three basins in your sewage plant, you can store all the 
uh, user calibrations for each individual basin. Um, you can um, give uh, it an ID and a name. This will be um, output uh, and together with the calibration settings and you can see those dilution settings, for example, also uh, at each measurement and particularly you can also store um, dilution settings in different uh, um, measurement series. So there is a lot of convenience. We introduced this in 2019. Uh, now, I have talked about a user calibration already, and um, I just want to, to show how it works, or, or just to, to say some words how it works. Um, if you are using process um, um, measurement, you know it already. So since we have different waters in different uh, environments, because there is shade, trees, different bacteria set, et cetera, uh, and different outlets, um, you uh, can adjust this background calibration curve, which is based on real samples to match it to your individual environment. That's important. And this will increase the accuracy. You don't need to do it, but actually um, we will see later that it, uh, it's increasing definitely um, this, this accuracy of the readings. So you get um, a raw value, as we have seen before in the screen, uh, and this is the directly measured sample. If you haven't done anything based on the, so it's based on the uh, on the curve when you start with optical reagent free. And by the way, an important um, um, it, uh, information: it can be a negative raw value because we do an algorithmic evaluation over a wide scan range. So it can be negative, and if it's negative, you must enter it as a negative value. And then we do have the lab measurement with routine analysis, uh, which is with the same sample will be um, your guidance. So uh, you take the same sample and perform. And we know that you are, are very skilled and uh, you are doing perfect uh, detection of COD and uh, doing double and triple um, reagent uh, sets or kits, uh, sorry, tubes uh, to, to, to make a good value. So actually the reference value will be the values we you have um, uh, de determined in the lab. So actually we put this into, the, uh, into this complete um, procedure and measurement procedure. And then you get an adjustment of the characteristics. So as we do not have a real calibration curve, every as you have to do it usually in routine analysis, we call it characteristic, but at the end, let's talk about it uh, for easier handling as a calibration curve, which is in the background. Now with the um, reference and um, optical reagent free adjustment, you simply can um, adjust this background um, calibration curve. If you do only a one point calibration, like in usual routine analysis as well, uh, you do a slope correction. And if you do a two-point calibration, you can. this can be done in both ways. Either it can be a slope correction, but sometimes also a so-called offset correction. So it means you shift it just a little bit uh, from, the background, um, uh, from the background curve. Um, and this sounds difficult, but we have a helping tool as we see in a second. Um, the important thing is, depending in which region of the world you are, for example, Middle Europe do have very big differences in the seasons, so winter to summer. This means it can be good to make this adjustment of the characteristics twice a year. Um, in other regions, it might be um, tropical season, rain season, whatever. So actually, you know best when you need an adjustment. Um, for us, for example, in Middle Europe, um, nitrate can be good to make a, a optimization according to uh, winter summer periods. And uh, once you have done a comparison um, or a user calibration, you will find some, in, uh, you will see how uh, results align. Um, sorry for it's 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 a measurement out of Germany, but um, just we look at this um, curve here in 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 the bottom. Um, this is nitrate, um, which was very good measurable at that part where we are, and you see um, these um, little um, 
uh, where my can you see my pointer probably so actually where you have these uh, triangles which are filled this is the optical reagent free measurement the raw values these ones here uh, and if you uh, look after the user calibration so when we did a routine measurement uh, with the nitrate test kit in the lab and then compared the raw values and entered the raw values versus the measured values, we have an absolute adjustment of the lab values with the optical reagent free values. And also we, we did it um, just um, together, the online measurement. So that was just a control if um, how, how the um, online measurement uh, with the process sensors worked. And, and we had all three um, values aligned. We have more curves. Uh, also, the first curve we see in the beginning, we have matching values. And that's a very good result because that also shows that if you have a good reference for all, so the sensors as well as the optical reagent free, with a good routine analysis in your lab, that you can also check and adjust um, optical sensors from the um, IQ sensor net. Um, so I know uh, this is a lot of theory, and um, before we uh, come to this uh, implementation guide, just to let uh, settle it a little bit. So in fact, it is an optical measurement, which is very similar uh, to the online sensors, and in comparison to a calibration curve done with standards in the background, this is based on real uh, samples of um, great many sewage plants. Since not every sewage plant is the same, we need to adjust the environment where um, you are measuring. And uh, so the curve for your measurement environment, and that's why we do a user calibration. Um, therefore, um, we want to um, go for the implementation guide and some um, guidance, some tips and tricks if you install uh, those measurements. Um, so first of all, our team and our partners will consult and support an implementation. And they will also tell you if it's not possible because not all environment particularly if it's uh, industrial, are possible to use it. But in fact, optical reagent-free measurement can be a COD and nitrate as a powerful option for monitoring also in surface water, lake, rivers, etc. cetera. Uh, and if it's performed correctly, uh, so it means with a good lab skill and with a good routine analysis as a um, reference method, the results are really highly precise. Um, and there, there need to be uh, considered some uh, facts before. We will look in, in the, into them uh, just uh, in the following slides. And um, my um, recommendation is you can download our um, optical re reference test manual. Uh, I have given the address um, here in this slide and you get the presentation later. Um, and, and read it. And there is uh, what we talked here, it's described. So actually it's good preparation and uh, thought uh, to read this manual ahead beside the consultants and support of our teams uh, and sales um, people. So um, when implementing, which water samples can be measured? Um, so it's always good to make a testing and matrix adjustment period before. This is also supported by our teams. Uh, it's sewage plant outlet, outlets um, and up to, that's an experimental um, value about approximately 30% of industrial water. Um, this is still valuable for this self-control and check uh, function. A trial period is more required than for any other sewage plant, if you know that there is industrial. And then river and surface waters. Um, and also um, I, uh, they, they work mostly, it's depending how much turbidity is in, uh, but we also recommend um, that a testing uh, and a check is, um, is helpful. 
By the way, I mean, if you do routine analysis with a spectrophotometer or with our spectrophotometers anyway, so you have this feature. And sometimes it's just the decision, do I want to have a, a VIS meter or a UVIS meter? Uh, and, and that is speaking for a UV VIS meter because then you have the option just on top uh, and it really can save testing kits. Um, which samples cannot be detected? Um, industrial waste, sugars, and alcohol. I point out sugars and alcohol because in one of the implementation periods in our environment, somebody took some alcohol to feed his bacteria, but the resting time of these um, ethanol was just a um, few minutes, and in his runoff, he had Sometimes he had a lot of COD, sometimes he didn't. So even for the management of the sewage plant, it was a fault. But in fact, uh, we had jumping values all over for routine and for optical reagent free. And it took us six weeks until we got to the procedure that they feed their bacteria like this. So I point out sugars and alcohol because I think um, all of you are very good in dealing with your sewage plants probably. But um, it, sometimes it's little faults or little handling um, falls from one or the other, um, which isn't knowing your environment and all of a sudden um, there is coming um, irritating results. Um, and also samples with high turbidity um, because turbidity generally is disturbing um, spectroscope, uh, spectrophotometric and, and photometric uh, tasks. Um, we cannot offer uh, inlet and biological tank but I need to say it's depending on the environment. Our Potsdam um, um, sewage plant, a huge uh, sewage plant close to Berlin, so the capital of Germany, um, they even use it in their um, um, SB air tank, so um, sequence biological tank reaction, and use this there. Uh, as a method um, which is giving their daily control in a sample with optical reagent free. So um, yeah, it's a little bit you have to check. And that is why we want to um, have this interesting question about your knowledge of the industrial compound. Quentin, will you, will you pull that question, please? Yes, please. So this is the question number two. I will start this question now. Could you please tell us, do you have changing industrial compounds in your wastewater plants? So yes, less than 30% or no. So at the first one, I will give you something like 30 seconds to answer, please. Yes, and as we have learned just before, it is the important part, um, can I, use optical reagent free do i know my environment well enough and that's a interesting uh, question to see um, if this method is worthwhile for a testing period because a testing period yes um, it takes you to it but as i said potsdam is a huge sewage plant and they are using it um, i hope we have this application report in english and if not it's time to translate it into english so I give you 10 more seconds, please. So I close the poll and I will share the result with you, Suzanne. Thank you. I can see it, by the way. Okay. So basically, 52% of the audience has answered yes. Mm -hmm. Then no is 27%, and less than 30% represent 21% of the audience. So if you have any comments, Susan, please feel free. Yes. Um, thank you, Quentin. Um, so basically, we have half half. So um, less than 30, and now it's worthwhile to think about. Yes, it is a difficult matter. It's depending where it is, if it's changing or if you know it when it's coming. So basically that is a decision which is a little bit in your hand, but um, it's 
it is definitely for all who have uh, a changing industrial compound in, uh, it is um, useful to discuss and to have a closer look into it before just uh, thinking, oh yes, great. Um, but it's good um, that we talked about it because that will help you as a kind of a guideline uh, how optical reagent and free measurements, so OPT-RF to speak frankly in short terms, uh, is an implementation uh, worthwhile. Um, to have an overview, what is the most important? Good handling skills, and I have seen you have very good handling skills. Sampling and data collection is also something sampling because if you want to make an adjustment with the IQ sensor net, definitely the sampling spot must be the same and it's very critical uh, to, to uh, make a good data collection in time and um, time and date uh, that you can align all these samples you take. Um, then um, I point that out in a second. Um, there is a difference in handling of the samples because the models are based on a constant stream in inline uh, measurement, in situ measurement. Therefore, um, we do not filter any sample for the optical reagent free measurement, which is different to routine analysis in some parts. Um, um, I skipped this lab skills again. <laughs> be aware of negative raw values. They can be negative, as I pointed out in the first session, and it means um, you have to enter them negatively. And um, to perform a matrix adjustment, and that's a good point for you to implement it, we are providing a Xylem Analytics Excel sheet for this optical reagent-free implementation. And this will, if you have an interim period and you collect a lot of data um, between lab and um, optical reagent-free measurement, which will automatically then calculate um, you best use a calibration uh, via linear regression to optimize your environment. And we come to that in a second. And so it's, it's really easy. Um, first of all, we talked about sampling. It must be a good and matching spot. I mean, this is what you have to do in daily work for routine analysis anyway. But particularly if you um, work with uh, IQ sensor net, UV with sensors, and with um, the lab matrix adjustment, then it's more important even because then your sample must be close to that where the optical uh, sensor is uh, placed. So actually that's for sure that it's important. And then as I pointed out, you need to have a time and date particularly if you have an IQ sensor, because that means the values which are with time and date must be aligned with the sample you took. So that is a tricky part. It's easy if you know it, but you must know that. Do not filter samples. So you directly put the sample into the cuvette uh, and um, take only a part of your sample to be fixed. So it means cooled or with acid, or you filter it with a syringe, uh, because um, for your lab routine, yes, you need follow the guidelines for uh, lab routine, which means nitrate and nitrate as they turn over quickly. Uh, you need to fix the sample, um, as I said, um, cooling whatever it is and measure it quite quickly uh, as usual. Um, that's one of the things. Uh, the second thing, best lab. So, um, to implement it, start with a reference meant eventually one to two times per week, which means you have to, um, the more reference values you get, and if you do it for two by three weeks and you get the dynamics of your, um, of your sewage plant, then you have the best adjustment as we can see. And that's why I say in the beginning, yes, it is worth, worthwhile to invest into some of the test kits and use the best matching measuring range where you are in the middle. I mean, we know it from routine analysis that we should do that, but actually also uh, for user calibration of optical reagent free, it's the same importance as for daily measurement. Um, I skipped the double, um, you are doubling and tripling best. Um, and then also, as I said, fitted um, samples and the COD standard digestion measure should, should be performed also very good. Um, so it's worthwhile to make a blank value, um, depending on how long you have the kits or for each box, for each new box. It's increasing the accuracy because uh, it, uh, COD 
uh, is uh, subject to deterioration in light of the color uh, of the color so of the um, sorry of the coloration so actually that has impact on the measurement and then 10 minutes after digestion swivel the cuvette and put the last condensation drop because that is it's just a minimum but you can increase it on that way and by the way look our videos um how best lab performance or cod performance is uh, we have a series of videos um, and then let's cool down slowly. As I mentioned already, this is the best settlement of turbidity. Um, we also said that already that the procedure differs a little bit from lab with the optical reagent free. Do not filter the sample because it's based on the algorithms and the calibration curve is based on real samples and the real samples from um, IQ sensor net are just uh, the open basins and rivers and waters, and there is no filtration usually done. Um, whereas, yes, um, the lab must be performed correctly. Um, easy, we have an easy method selection. Uh, we have um, profiles which you can set for different location, and everything is given not only in the operating manual, but also it's shown on the screen. So you have a menu guidance, easy user, um, user guidance uh, on screen. A very important part is pipette the sample directly into a 10 millimeter quartz cuvette. Uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, in a quartz cuvette. So no UV plastic cell. They start um, with transmission not below uh, 20, 220 nanometer and we start our scan at 200 so it must be a quartz cuvette no bubbles no condensation no fingerprints no scratches no dirt so uh, everything you know from lab um, routine and best um, uh, practice but i just want to point it out um, and then also uh, as we as we, sh we have shown before minimum sample dilution uh, to keep the original matrix unchanged as much as possible because then this relates best to the background evaluation uh, of the um, real sample curve. Um, and also important time, date, value with matching lab results and eventually with lab matching IQ results. Different water matrices like liver, rivers and lakes. Um, that is the same as I said before. Um, here for COD method, I want to point out that we do have two COD um, testing procedures. The one is for total and the one is for dissolved. Since rivers um, are clear and if they have some particles in, it's mostly like sediment or after heavy rain events or something like that, they carry less bacteria than a particle would be in the outlet of a sewage plant. So when we have a sludge particle in the sewage plant, there is more bacteria, there is more organic compound that eventually we do have in lake and river waters. And therefore, um, you can measure both because you just leave in the same cuvette and measure two methods. So it's an easy way. So you can do both. But at the end of the day, our experience is that the um, method for dissolved COD is the best method for surface water. Um, if we talk about user calibration, about optimization and matrix adjustment, which is used in the same way, each matrix is different. So even if you have a big sewage plant and different basins, um, and you can use it in a SBR tank uh, or SBR basin, or, uh, for example, the bacteria mix might differ. Then some have shades, others have full sunshine, others are covered. Um, then you have seasons or geographical um, specialties, temperature. So it can be useful to make uh, implementation for each of these basins if you can use it. And this is easy handled, as I said. Uh, we have a great convenience put in 2019 for profiles, user calibration, and just with checking and, and selecting it uh, from a selection menu, you can pull up uh, with a simple F1 key similar to the Windows function key. You just go into the menu and select the particular method and profile you have stored before. 
The interesting thing is that nitrate very often in a sewage plant, uh, you can work with one profile. And it's also good that um, you can switch between dilutions uh, without changing samples. Uh, sorry, samples, yes, but uh, um, changing profiles. Um, and then also, um, I said that various times that we link the correct data to each other. And then this is the linear, a linear regression tool from Xylem Analytics. So it's a basic Excel sheet, and you just have to enter all your values you have collected over two by three weeks into uh, one of these green fields. So you are um, entering all the values you have collected for the raw data from optical reagent free and the measurement data of the um, lab method. You just enter those uh, into to this um, sheet and the, the this sheet will do a linear regression and calculate the best value pair which you have to enter for the sensor as well uh, or not only sensor excuse me for the optical reagent free as well uh, as for the lab data you see here the um, sensor, but it's a, uh, you can use the sensor sheet for the optical reagent-free data same way. And then from all these implementation data in let's say about two, three weeks period, this will calculate um, this best uh, value. And uh, what's done is this graph on the right side, if you look at the right side, there you have the linear regression. So um, the blue squares are the data of the optical and um, reference um, values. And then from this out, there is done by the regression process, um, the best value pair for the measuring range. That's why we do have a little bit of a variable uh, measuring range. It's adapted to your environment. And if you look at the a uh, small um, on the on the right bottom graph, you see the reference of optical reagent free data with other data. And um, the black curve, um, so it's the, the the lowest curve is the optical reagent free data, whereas the orange uh, graph would be the reference lab data. So you can see that there was kind of an offset. And after the user calibration, we align more or less the optical data which we gained uh, with the uh, reference data. So this ensures the best and reliable results. And you can see that with a, with a good optimization uh, in, a, in a sewage plant, um, you can achieve real, reliable, quick data, which helps you in self-control, a daily quick routine, or even a quick routine of your um, UV with sensor if you have uh, IQ sensor net installed. Uh, you can go um, on different places because this spectrophotometer with the OPT-RF is only um, 4.5 kilo. We do a power supply, you can work it in a trunk, in a, uh, in a van, you can go to different sites, for example, for monitoring of environmental surface water, uh, or if you are servicing for your customers, there is a field uh, case available. Um, I just want to mention that we do have the very comfortable routine analysis, which many of you probably know already, uh, and we can use great many different test kits with rectangular uh, and cell tests, which um, have a barcode recognition, so you can ease up your um, lab routine anyway and make it already cost is effective. And uh, at the end, uh, it's not only that we do have the optical reagent free, uh, but with all the test kits and every testing we do have, there is many applications. I, I think we have even mining companies now who are using um, the optical reagent free in their environment. But for many others, we offer a great many other options. So um, this was it uh, from my side. And I hand over to Quentin right now. Yes, thank you very much, Suzanne. So this is the last question, uh, please, for, for you, the, the audience. Um, if you would like us to contact you, yes or no so i will just start 
um, this poll question. And of course, we will answer the question that you have raised on the Q&A um, section. So basically, Suzanne, uh, we do have something like uh, 10 questions to answer. Okay. Yeah. Feel free again to ask your question on the Q&A section, please. Another I 10 seconds. The chance, I take the chance to say, to say thank you already for this compact, <laughs> uh, <laughs> concentrated um, audience. Um, and look forward to the questions. Okay, so I end the poll. So we will contact you if you answer yes, and uh, our local representative will, will be in touch with you. So stop the poll. And if you did not have time, please do not hesitate to contact me and they will put you in contact with the right, the right colleague. So basically let's start with the, with the Q&A section, Suzanne, if you agree? Yes. So sure. the first question is, do you see the question or not? Yes, I see the question. OK, OK. So the first one um, is, if the range of the COD for an influent wastewater is uh, between 300 and 1,100 milligram liter, can we use the Photolab 7,600 to measure? And how? Um, yeah, unfortunately not, uh, because there is um, very much turbidity in, and um, there's, there's a settlement process coming along. Um, the optical sensor of the UV vis is kind of a polychromator. We do have a monochromator. And also um, to clean cuvettes and to get uh, the, the um, it's, it's too high of a concentration. So unfortunately, um, we are not able these days. We are thinking and we are testing, but uh, it's not uh, easy done. We, uh, it's it's not possible for now. Okay. Um, the second question is: Can we use optical reagent-free technique for measuring COD, nitrate, and nitrate in seawater? Unfortunately, not. Uh, I do not know if it's a future project um, whenever, but um, as a, a, the calibration curve of the optical reagent free measurement is based on sewage plant, since this is the most, uh, and, and we do have some river water experience right now, but um, the, the algorithms which are behind this method to evaluate this scan, because it's a scan about, um, from, from 200 to 390 nanometer, and this is, um, um, completely different with seawater for sure. And I do not know if we do have interfering processes again. So actually uh, there is no, um, no experience and there is no uh, calculation model behind. Okay. Um, the other one is about an approval. Um, what about AFA approval, uh, APHA approval? Approval. Yes, um, the AFA is um, definitely, um, let's put it that way, um, it needs some experience, it needs some proof, so whoever is helping us um, to implement it and to make an application report uh, uh, will be a base for approvals in terms of standard methods in, in the different regions. And from my side, um, I would be really happy if, if I can help to make an application report. I want also to say that our supportive team here and our application specialists, um, particularly here in Weilheim, uh, we, are, um, we are working together if there is an application report and, and a period to do some of those work. And uh, that's to all of you. I'm very happy if we if we can move on with that for now. Um, it must show its proof. So um, the proof of a pudding is the eating I've learned in English. And um, that means um, if we all eat a lot, then eventually we get the approved. <laughs> but thanks for the question. And yes, it's innovative. 
Um, the other one, so it's another question about seawater samples. So you have already answered this one. Yeah, and it's good um, that we have two questions of that because this uh, means the interest and uh, I mean, future, future ideas, future time, and um, who knows um, what future brings. Mm -hmm. And then someone from um, Uganda is mentioning that they are using our Zion analytic devices. Um, please, uh, William, uh, can you send me an email and I will forward it to my to my colleague in charge of your um, of your country. Um, basically, he is asking. Um, they are working mainly in monitoring surface fresh water, where the sewage plants release their treated water. Their mm -hmm. nitrate, nitrate, sorry, values are in the lower range of five mm -hmm. microgram liters. Mm -hmm. Will it work towards lowering the detection limits? Um, the lowering um, is um, not possible because there's like also with reagents, there is always a limit in the technique and procedure itself. And with the nitrate, um, it is, as I, as I mentioned before, the nitrate and the nitrate are in the same range um, of absorbance. And um, that you have very often a coverage uh, between uh, a coverage from the nitrate. In fact, uh, I do not know, um, eventually it could be interesting to run a sample and see how the nitrate versus the nitrate is. But um, yeah, I, I think we are just out of, of the detection level. Okay, but please, uh, Mr. W William, do send me a, an email. Uh, and we will get back to you on your inquiries because it looks like you are interested in the devices and uh, I will put you in contact with the relevant person. Then another one, what is the cost of the equipment? So we will answer locally again um, to, your, to your question. I will put you in contact with the relevant sales But colleague. I want to answer well, the chemical. Yeah. And the chemical, I'll let you in, so of course, about the chemicals. Yes, um, it's, as I said, it's a reduction of cost. So if it's depending very much on your local rules, usually a COD report must be with test tubes anyway. So actually, it's not approved as the standard method which you can use for reporting. I do not know from you area and country um, and, and Quentin will tell that to me um, when he, he was in contact with you, but no chemical is never given because even if you implement it, you need to make lab references and you have to repeat leverant, leverant, um, any now and then check your adjustment because waters are changing or as I said, periodical adjustments. So it's never that you do not need any chemical. It is always related to a reduction and it's never related, for example, I can say from my country, Germany, it cannot be used for official reports in the moment. And that's uh, why we had the question before, do we get an approval? And this is a process which is going on. Okay, thank you. So we, we do have another question about, um, so is, is your existing photo lab capable of reagent-free test for COD? Yes, it's the photo lab 7,600 UV this model. It's the only model who can do that because um, this is our model in the UV range, uh, which we have. And this is where we have implemented these methods. And also uh, due to our improvements in 2015 in this instrument, uh, the UV this instrument, we are able to do these scans fast, etc. cetera. Um, yes, it is the existing model UV this. Okay, and then we have, an inquiry about can you go back to the to the first graph 
I could not see it very well. So um, as I mentioned before, we will send you the presentation. You will receive it as a PDF file and you will receive uh, the record as well. So you can have a look maybe uh, later on about the graph. And again, um, I think Suzanne will show the last slide where you will have our contact information. Um, please feel free to send us um, emails. Okay. Maybe and I can will... say something to the first graph. Um, yeah. We had, uh, we had, uh, it was the time and it was um, the amount, but um, um, in the first graph of the first slide, there were, it's indicated that we have a sensor measurement, which was the blue line. And this was related with the date uh, in the X axis. And we have uh, the, the values. So I think it was the concentration or it was the absorbance, I'm not sure. Uh, and we had, uh, Additionally to the blue line, we had um, we had uh, values from lab and optical reagent free. So just if you look uh, to it later. Okay. Uh, another question: Is the optical reagent free method only just for water samples? Uh, you mean like uh, probably like drinking water or clear water? Um, yes, it, it, but as I say, since the basics algorithms are based on sewage plants, uh, it is always useful to test it. And then it is applied in many other waters as well. So if the water samples means drinking water, uh, yes, we had, um, we had it as well, but um, it can be, it, it's, I, I would always test it. Okay. I would always go to a location and test it. For example, if you do groundwater and you have sediments or more sediments before it's treated, or if you take it out of uh, river waters, it's a completely different water eventually. So um, optical reagent-free measurement, I always would do a testing. Hmm. Okay. And as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, we do have local offices and uh, maybe with some uh, demo devices as well locally, or so it could be possible to make tests uh, locally as well, you know, so please reach out to us. Um, another question, Suzanne, do we have plan to add other parameters as the reagent-free measurement? Um, this is... Um, um... This is always related to turnover and chemical reactions. And I think uh, there is BOD, then we do have already in the photo lab uh, 7000 uh, series, we do have the UBT. Um, so the transmission, uh, we do have SIC, uh, sp uh, spectral absorbance coefficient, uh, which is uh, free, we have coloration, but unfortunately many of the other uh, reagents um, need uh, parameters need a turnover. So for now, um, there is nothing in the pipeline, apart from the fact that I would like to have the BOD, which we have in the UV and or in the in the sensors as well transferred to 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 photonab. Okay. Another question, can we measure mercury using reagent with the Photolab 7600? Uh, to speak frankly, uh, I cannot, and I, I, I'm not sure if we do have a mercury test set. Uh, sorry, I cannot answer that question in the moment. I need to look in the price list. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. So please, oh, oh, uh, uh, Quentin, you will, you will go back, please, with that question. Yes, of course. Please send us an email, or can, can you put, please, uh, Suzanne, the, the last slide with our contact information? And yes, um, we, we do have it. Mm -hmm. Then um, another question about approvals. Is this method approved as a standard method or something like that, um, EPA, for example, or other standard organization? Yeah. Um, this is um, covering um, the, the, um, all these approvals worldwide. So EPA uh, or uh, AFA, what we had, or also in our region. Uh, this is subject to proof that it can be used, and this is um, 
subject to make it more uh, public and uh, to be implemented. Uh, so actually we, we are working on it. We do application reports. We also had a report here from someone who is in the environmental um, field, but actually it takes time. So we are working on it, but for now it's not yet anywhere approved as a standard method. And um, we have to think about one thing. Um, since industrial wastewater, et cetera, is not part of this detection method and cannot be detected, um, that will be um, um, always a subject which is in discussion. So if we can prove that with the correct reporting, it will never be a reporting without any COD test, I'm sure about that, because we always have to prove that, you, that a reference measurement has been established that the results for reporting, not on a self-control, um, can be accepted when it's proven to be referenced. That is a different matter. OK, thanks. Another one is for total 7,600 upgradable to do reagent-free tests. It has it implemented already. The yeah. Photolab 7,600 does have one menu option uh, and if someone is using it already, it's in the screen, in the starting um, screen, it is the upper right button of the six buttons there. Okay, another one. Can we use the conventional digestion methods on the Photolab 7600? Yes, um, if you get the presentation, um, the last two slides are showing just what we have. And um, we do have the full routine analysis. So we do have about 190 or 150, 290 tests, respectively methods. We do have a barcoded um, detection of the test kits uh, of these 150 test kits. And we do have, in comparison to many other um, providers, we do have the opportunity to run barcoded automatic detection also with cuvette tests and the cuvette tests are regular reagent tests, which means you just add reagents to a sample uh, and then you transfer it to a rectangular test. And they are so much cheaper. They are almost in the range of the very cheap powder pillow tests, but they are high qualified test kits uh, from Merck. Uh, and absolutely accurate. So in total, you find um, 200 methods. A method update is provided. You have barcode for most of them. Um, they are automatically selected. And if you have uh, test kits uh, in, re in rectangular cells, they are automatically switching to the correct measuring range. Um, so the Photolab 7000 series provides all these highly precise, easy to use routine analysis. And the UV vis meter is giving the chance of optical reagent free, only the UV because we make the scan in the UV range, but it's all set, it's all there. You just, you unpack it and you use it and you use it really very simple. And the last is actually a more comment about the limit of detection of nitrates with the optical reagent free seems pretty low. Maybe do you have a comment on that? Um, yes, um, but uh, other than COD, the nitrate can be diluted. We found out in the Potsdam sewage plant, as far as I know, so this sewage plant close to Berlin, um, it was about a dilution of five, which worked in all their locations. So they have implemented it in five uh, different places, um, which means in the outlet, but also in some of the basins. And um, they run with one model and they did a dilution of five. So nitrate usually is not as critical to dilution as it would be like COD because COD is related um, sometimes also to particles or something like that. And we cannot um, 
um, uh, go down because the absorbance is so high that uh, we cannot drop it. So dilution is the, the key to it. Okay. So a new question, Susan. Um, do we need to use the reference samples for calibration? Yes, the calibration. Um, so calibration, as we said, it's that you adapt the method to your environment. And this is um, done that we do um, the same sample, which you would do complete, uh, which you would measure directly with the optical method, put also in the reference using a test kit like COD test kit, uh, cell test, or also eventually um, with the nitrate and nitrate, you could also use reagent test kits. But um, that is the reference, that is the calibration. And once it is set, then you can use it for a while. And depending where you are, you can use it for a longer while, or if you have steady, uh, very steady conditions. Okay, so I think we have answer all the questions on the Q&A. Um, so it's time for, for us to stop this recording and to say um, thank you very much for attending this, uh, this webinar. Uh, in case you have any more question, you have our contact information. So please, again, feel free to contact us. Um, we would be very happy to hear some feedback from you as well. Um, if you would like to talk about additional topics in the future, in future webinars, maybe all suggestions are more than welcome. So thank you very much, Suzanne. Thank you very much uh, for, for the presentation as well. I will stop. And I want to thank to you setting it up. And I also want to thank again the audience because um, it was very interesting to see um, the questions of the different countries and feel free if you have an application, application report, if you are implementing it and we can help all together to make this more um, common and eventually get some approvals, um, we are happy to cooperate. Of course. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a nice day and uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.